Sandra was a 32-year-old high school English teacher living in a suburb outside of Los Angeles. She took great pride in her long, wavy blonde hair that fell halfway down her back. Sandra had grown it out ever since she was a teenager. She lived in a little bungalow by herself, having gone through a recent breakup. Sandra enjoyed quiet nights at home, grading papers and working in her flower garden on weekends. One day after school, Sandra stopped to pick up some groceries. As she was putting bags into her car, two men approached her from behind and grabbed her. They were part of a local gang that would kidnap young women as part of an initiation rite, forced her into a windowless van. Sandra sat trembling in the back of the van as it sped down the highway, taking her farther from home by the minute. The two men who had grabbed her outside the grocery store sat on either side, tightly gripping her arms so she couldn't break free. One of the men had covered her mouth with his hand so she couldn't scream for help. Don't you dare make a sound or we'll shave your pretty blonde hair all off, he growled into her ear. Sandra's heart pounded with terror at the threat. After what seemed like hours, the van pulled up outside a dilapidated warehouse. Sandra didn't recognize the rundown neighborhood they were in. She was well outside her familiar suburb now. The men yanked Sandra out and dragged her inside. Under the harsh fluorescent lights, she could see at least six other men waiting, their eyes filled with menacing anticipation. Sandra was dragged into the dark warehouse by the kidnappers. In the middle of the open floor sat a large barber chair, like something from an old-fashioned barber shop. The men forced Sandra into the chair and strapped her arms down so she couldn't move. One of them got right in her face and said menacingly, The president has ordered you to follow his commands. If you refuse, we've been told to shave all your hair off as punishment. Sandra was dressed in tight-fitting clothes as part of her role as the president's barber girl. She felt exposed and vulnerable strapped to the chair in her revealing outfit. The kidnappers proceeded to set up five video cameras all around the chair, angled to capture every angle of Sandra as the events unfolded. Please don't do this, Sandra begged, tugging helplessly at her restraints, but the men just sneered at her cries. Sandra sat trembling in the barber chair as one of the kidnappers focused a video camera on the president. The president's face was obscured by a black hood as he stood next to Sandra holding a piece of paper. He began reading from the paper in a disguised voice. We have set the following conditions for your release. You must pay us the sum of $50,000, and you must shave your head completely bald and keep it that way for five years. Sandra gasped in horror as the reality of her situation set in. The president continued, If you refuse these terms, the price for your freedom will double to $100,000. Additionally, you must agree to work with us and lure other victims into our traps. Tears streamed down Sandra's face as the president crumpled the paper and walked out of the camera's view. She thrashed against the leather straps holding her down, Please, I can't do this. Don't make me shave my hair, she wailed. The gang leader picked up the clippers and flicked them on menacingly. Then I guess you picked the second option. Hand over 100 grand and start bringing us fresh meat, he snarled. Sandra sobbed uncontrollably as the guards unbuckled the straps, dragging her away to a holding cell. She ran her hands through her long blonde hair one last time, dreading the day she'd have to betray someone else to save her locks from the clippers. After two days in the dingy cell, the gang chief approached Sandra. Time's up, he growled. Today your pretty locks get shaved off. Sandra begged and pleaded with him, but the chief would not be swayed. He informed her that while she was imprisoned, he had repeatedly called her family from an unknown number and disguised his voice. I told your parents to pay up or their daughter will face punishment, he sneered. Sandra's heart dropped knowing her family's desperate efforts to save her had failed. The chief and two other gang members dragged Sandra back to the barber chair set up beneath the bright lights and cameras. Sandra sobbed as they fastened her arms and legs down. Please, I'll do anything else, 
she cried in desperation, tugging uselessly at the restraints. The chief just laughed and flicked on the clippers, the buzz echoing through the warehouse. Say goodbye to your hair, darling, the chief taunted as he brought the vibrating shears to her scalp. Sandra wailed in despair as her blonde locks began falling to the floor. She squeezed her eyes shut, tears streaming down her face as her head was shorn completely bald. Sandra shuddered as the cold blades of the clippers made contact with her scalp. As the gang chief shaved off section after section of her long blonde hair, she felt utterly powerless and humiliated. Tears spilled down her cheeks as she watched huge chunks of hair fall to the floor beneath the chair. Her once beautiful golden locks now lay in clumps around her feet. Sandra closed her eyes, unable to bear watching her feminine identity being stripped away. But she could still hear the harsh buzz of the clippers as they ruthlessly removed every last strand. Cool air hit the bare skin of her scalp and neck, exposed for the first time in years. Sandra felt naked and vulnerable without the veil of hair that had protected her since childhood. In a matter of minutes, her head had been reduced to nothing more than dark stubble. Every last bit of her hair was gone. Sandra ran her hand across her shorn head, the prickly sensation foreign and disturbing. She let out a sob, mourning the loss of her crowning glory. Finally, the clippers stopped their dreadful buzzing. The chief stepped back to admire his handiwork with a sinister smile. Not so pretty now, are you? He taunted. Sandra kept her eyes closed, wishing she could somehow escape this unimaginable nightmare. But the cameras captured her shame from every angle. Sandra sat sobbing in the barber chair, her newly shorn head hung in despair. The gang chief, who had sheared off her locks, now stepped aside. The president approached, still hidden behind a black hood. In a chilling and distorted voice, he bellowed, You will pay us $50,000 and keep your head shaved for five years. Sandra shook with sobs, rubbing her shaved scalp. Please, I can't, she cried, but her pleas fell on deaf ears. The president nodded, and the men released Sandra from the chair. Her legs wobbled weakly as she stood up, still in shock from losing her blonde tresses. Sandra looked around the warehouse through tear-filled eyes. The men were busy turning off cameras and packing up equipment, the sick filming session now complete. Hair covered the floor around the barber chair, the only evidence left of Sandra's once flowing locks. She ran a hand over her stubbly head, feeling utterly violated and exposed. The gang chief gripped Sandra's arm, leading her toward the door. Time to go back to your cell while you make arrangements to get us the money, he growled in her ear. During her month imprisoned in the cell, Sandra's head was shaved daily with a razor and shaving cream. Each time her stubble began to grow back in, the gang members would strap her into the barber chair and gleefully shave her scalp once more. After a month of this ritual humiliation, the president approached Sandra's cell. We sent the video footage of your shavings to your family, he informed her. They finally paid up the $50,000 we demanded. Sandra felt a surge of relief, thinking her ordeal may finally be over. The president ordered her release. The gang members bound Sandra's hands and feet and brought her to a car outside. They shoved her in the back seat and clamped a hand over her mouth. Keep quiet or else, one man threatened. Sandra nodded timidly, her shorn head still unused to the open air. As the car drove off, the president's warning echoed in Sandra's mind. You are forbidden from going to the police or speaking about this to anyone. After everything she had endured, Sandra knew she had no choice but to comply. Her family had paid the ransom, but she would never truly be free. The men had taken more than just her hair. They had robbed her of her dignity, identity, and power over her own life. The car eventually pulled up outside of Sandra's home. She was roughly shoved out of the vehicle, stumbling barefoot up the walkway. As Sandra reached her front door, she hesitated nervously. She hadn't seen her family in over a month, 
Would they even recognize their daughter and sister with her drastically shorn hair? With a deep breath, Sandra turned the handle and stepped inside. Her mother let out a cry, rushing to embrace Sandra. Her father and younger brother joined in the tearful reunion. Despite her shaved head, her family enveloped Sandra in unconditional love. They were simply grateful to have her safely home. Over the next few days, Sandra gradually opened up about her traumatic experience. Her family provided comfort, reassuring her that it wasn't her fault. They would help her heal no matter how long it took. Sandra knew the road ahead would be difficult. After spending a week at home with her loving family, Sandra felt ready to return to her job as a teacher. She wore headscarves to work each day, self-conscious about her shorn head. A month later, as Sandra left the school building, a black car pulled up outside. One of the kidnappers from the gang emerged and said chillingly, you know what needs to be done. Sandra's heart dropped, but she complied silently as the man forced her into the car. They drove to a familiar warehouse where the rest of the gang waited. Despite having paid the ransom, the men strapped Sandra down in the barber chair once again. Cameras surrounded her, ready to document her humiliation. The cold metal of the clippers pressed against Sandra's vulnerable scalp once again. She flinched as the buzzing blades ignited, beginning their ruthless shearing. Strand by golden strand, Sandra's wispy regrowth was mown down. She squeezed her eyes shut, tears dripping down her cheeks onto the black nylon cape fastened around her neck. The gang leader meticulously moved the clippers across Sandra's head, ensuring every last bit of stubble was removed. The harsh cropping was almost clinical in its precision. As the minutes dragged on, Sandra could feel her scalp becoming smooth and exposed. The sensation of the clipper's teeth vibrating against her raw skin made her shudder. She wanted desperately to dissociate, to escape this cruel punishment in her mind. But the grating buzz of the clippers kept her nightmarishly present in her anguish. The leader lifted Sandra's chin, forcing her to face the camera. Smile for the folks at home, he taunted cruelly. Sandra's eyes conveyed a brokenness no ransom could fix. At last, the buzzing ceased, Sandra's cleansing complete. Tears still flowed silently as the numbness set in. She knew this ritual would never end. The leader ran his palm across Sandra's freshly denuded head, savoring his work. Her skin was baby soft, stripped of any trace of hair. See you next time, he whispered menacingly in her ear before releasing her from the chair. The cameras had captured every intimate detail, sealing Sandra's fate as the gang's eternal captive. Hey, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. I just wanted to take a moment to thank you for all your support of my channel. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to share my stories with you. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the story. What did you like about it? If you enjoyed the story, please share it with your friends and family. And if you could take a moment to like the clip and subscribe to my channel, I would be so grateful.